Hello, Marcel Khadiev here. This is a quick tutorial of setting up a character hair using Ornatrix for Maya. The first step is to actually load Ornatrix and to do so you need to go to Plugin Manager and find the Ornatrix drop-down and just click load it. Once you do that, a new shelf will appear called Ornatrix in Maya and this shelf will contain pretty much all of the controls that we'll be needing to style our character's hair. So the first thing I need to do is to define the area where I want to plant the hairs and to do this I'm just going to use the paint selection brush and use the face selection to kind of paint out the scalp of this character. Now this is a pretty dense mesh and normally we would use something which has a lot fewer polygons but this is the model that we have at the moment and even with this kind of detail Ornatrix can handle hair generation just fine. So let me go ahead and paint all the areas where I think the character's hair should grow and once I do that we can add hair to our character using the add hair to selection button. When I do that, two things happen. First, we get a hair operator stack dialog open up on the left of Maya. And second, we get the actual hairs. In Ornatrix, all the operators that uh, we use on hair are defined as Maya nodes, but we have created a quick and convenient way to select and parametrically edit these nodes using the hair stack. So first, let me just select the hairs themselves. And when I do that, we can see that the hair stack gets populated and by default we have a couple of uh, operators. First one is to generate the guides, then we have the hair that's generated from the guides and then we get some render settings applied and by default the thickness of the hair is, is pretty big so we, we can decrease this by just dragging this slider over here and setting the width that we would like. Next thing I'm going to change is the length of the hairs. By default it's pretty long so we probably want something shorter and to do this I can go to my guides for mesh node and just decrease the length slider over here. By dragging it, I can quickly change the, the overall length of the hairs on this character. Right now we're displaying the final hairs of the character, which are getting generated from the guides. But if we just want to see the guides that are used to generate this hair, we can uncheck the hair from guides node toggle and we can see the guides right away. So first thing I'm going to do is style these guides and give the hair some kind of shape. To do this, I need to click on the guides for mesh node and use the edit guides shelf button to add the edit guides operator to my stack. Once I add this operator, I have a set of controls in the attribute editor which allow me to do various separation with these guides. Using these controls I can modify the roots of the guides, I can change the control points for each guide or I can brush them. So let's define some shape by brushing using the comb brush and first thing I'm going to do is change the brush size a little bit and then I can just continue brushing the hairs into any shape that I want. And besides the shape, brushes can also change all kinds of things about the hair. So for example, I can cut if I think that the length is too long in some places. Or I can adjust the length using the length brush. So I can just pull and push guides as I want them and this will modify the overall length. Note that at any point during the separations, I can always click back on my hair from guides node and see how the final hairs are going to look. And even with this option on, I can continue editing the hairs and it's still going to reflect the final shape of the hairs. But usually just displaying the guides will give you quicker performance inside the viewport. Besides using the comb brush, I can also use the control point editing mode. And to do this, I just select the tips of the guides and I can just move them into position as I want. I can either preserve the guide length, let me undo this last operation, or I can turn off strand IK and just sort of push the guides into the place where I want them to be. I can also move the control points along the strands and modify just these places as well. Let me just give my character somewhat of a bank up front and modify the shape a little bit more to define some kind of cool looking hairstyle. I can use the pull brush and I can change the uh, effect that I have of this brush over the length of the strands just to make it affect the strand more at its root rather than its deep. 
and pull some of these hairs out a little bit of the scalp and then I can do some more brushing Once I'm somewhat satisfied with the overall shape of my guides, I can just go back into my hair from guide node and maybe set the viewport count of hairs to bigger value just so I can see more hairs inside the viewport. It is looking good overall, but I can change and define the shape of the hair more by maybe changing the interpolation type to segment interpolation. And then I can also see a problem with this hair right now, which is guides are getting interpolated between this area of the hair and this area, and they don't want them to be. So I can define partings in the hair, either letting Ornatrix define them automatically using the auto part option. And it's doing a somewhat good job, but I can also go and manually create my parting. So using the parting editing tool, I can click and drag on the scalp of this character. And what this will do is create a plane on top of the scalp, which I can adjust after I created it. And it will basically tell Ornatrix not to interpolate between hairs that are on either side of this plane. I can create as many planes as I want, or I can go and edit them at any point later in time. So once I have defined my hair a little bit more, I can start adding some procedural modifiers to create even more interesting effects for the hair. So for example, I can click on the curl operator to add curling to my hair and by default the curling is a bit too much so I can decrease the magnitude and the changes will interactively reflect inside the viewport. Then maybe I can also add a clustering and there are two types of clustering Ornatrix. In this case, we can use guide clustering to make the hairs clustered to the guys that they were generated from. And then finally, maybe I can add some freeze to my hair using the freeze operator. And freeze has an option to have outliers, which I can reduce to have fewer messy hairs. And maybe I can just increase the overall freeze of the hair a little bit to give it a little more randomness and variation. So right now it's looking good, but it seems like it's not smooth enough. So what I can do is go back to my very bottom guides for mesh node and change the point count of the guides to something like 20, which will add a lot more detail to the guides and make them much smoother overall. At any point in time, I can go back to any of the operators that I have before and I can either turn them off or I can just select and delete them and I can re-add operators at any point in the stack in any later time. So for example, I can go back and re-add my freeze node and this time I can change the parameters to something different. I can also rename my nodes right inside the hair stack view by just double clicking them and giving them a more meaningful name. For example, in this case, I can name my freeze node hair frizz and it will automatically take care of renaming all my nodes and attributes for you. So the last step is to set up some material for this and I'm going to use V-Ray to render out my hair. So I can right click on my hair shape and assign a new material to it. And I will assign the V-Ray hair material. So now that I have my material assigned, all I need to do is go and render my scene. It's a good first look, but it seems like there is not enough hairs and we could maybe add a little bit more curling. So I can just go down to hair from guides node in my stack and I can change the render count to a higher value. So maybe we need 30,000 render hairs instead of 10,000. And maybe I can go to my curl node and change my curling to something which will give more effect. All of this is parametric, non-destructive, and you can modify things at any given time, making this workflow very flexible in production settings. Let me re-render my scene again and this time we get something maybe a little more interesting. So this is a quick and dirty introduction to Ornatrix beta for Maya. There is a lot more ground to cover in terms of features and tutorials. If you would like to be a part of the beta, please drop us a line using the link provided in the description below. Thank you very much.